Hello everybody and thank you for having me here at Gitcom. It's great to be sharing some of my thoughts on the challenges that I've faced with growing communities and how you can hopefully learn from my experiences. My name is Ruth Cheesley and my pronouns are she, her. I work full time for Acquia as Mortic Project Lead. Mortic's an open source marketing automation platform which you can find out more about at mortic.org. I'm also involved and lead a lot of other communities, big and small, outside of the tech world. So let's talk about scaling communities. Growing and scaling a community of any kind, whether it's in tech or in the wider world, isn't without its challenges. As this is quite a short session, I've pulled out three key areas where I've personally faced challenges and will share some of the things that have helped me with facing them. Possibly the most fundamental challenge as you start to grow and scale any community is making sure that you stay true to your values, that the culture of the community grows in the right direction. As you scale any community, it becomes really important to focus on developing the culture proactively. When a community is formed, mostly people know each other well and there's a mutual understanding of behaviours that are expected. But as you scale the community, this has to be made much more explicit. You can't hope everyone who comes through the door to understand and get your, your mutual understanding. If you want your community to be welcoming and friendly, you have to take proactive steps for the conditions for that to arise. You'll also need to be ready at some point to take action when someone doesn't live up to those values. So you have to be prepared for that. Another big challenge that I see just as much in my local Buddhist centre as within our open source community is encouraging folks to step up and be actively involved in contributing to the community. As a community grows, there will be a need to shift from you or a small team being the doers to involving a wider team and delegating things out to others. For this to work, it's important to figure out what can be delegated, how and when is the right time to start delegating things. For me, one of the biggest challenges is trusting others to do a good job. It's a tough one to learn, getting your own ego out of the way and letting other people step in and make mistakes. But it's the only way to get things moving in a more sustainable direction. Also related to this is finding ways to empower, appreciate and reward the people who do step up and get involved in a way that's both appreciated by the individuals and sustainable for you to do. It might be as simple as saying thank you, sending out some swag, giving a shout out. There's all kinds of ways to do this. Finally, probably the most important challenge that I faced in scaling communities is avoiding burnout, both of you or your small team or of the folks who actually start contributing. It can seem like a never ending task scaling a community and quite a lonely one too, especially in the early days. Driving the growth of a community needs to happen in a way that's sustainable for you and the community. You're the most precious resource when it comes to the community. And if you can't function, the whole community is going to suffer. Nowadays, communities never sleep. There's always someone wanting something at every hour of the day and night. And as a leader, I believe it's really important that you make sure you have time where you can switch off completely from your community, have that time that you need to rest and recharge regularly. So the three areas of focus we're gonna be looking at, growth but not at the expense of culture, setting folks up so they can get involved and contribute in a meaningful way, and avoiding burnout of both yourself and contributors. So let's look at how we might address some of these challenges as we start to grow communities. Starting with culture, I think the first place you really need to focus on as you grow and scale any community is clarity. Clarity on what the cultural expectations, norms and values for the community actually are. Taking it from something which is a mutual understanding to something that's clearly laid out for everyone to see. Creating, if they don't already exist, core values, mission statements, visions and a code of conduct are all ways you can make the implicit explicit. Next is having clarity on how decisions are made in your community. There are lots of different models from benevolent dictator through to completely democratised decision making and everything in between. But the importance is being clear on what decisions can be made in the community, what needs to come back to your core team, and maybe some that are only decided by the founder. Associated with that is making it clear how stuff gets done. How is the community organised into teams? How do people join the teams? How do they get stuff done when they're in part of a team? 
and what are the processes or workflows that need to be followed. Making it clear means that folks get a better understanding of how to be involved, but also sets their expectations and doesn't lead so much to disappointment if things take longer than they're expected. So once we've been clear on what the project's about, our values, how to get stuff done, the next key area I think is important to focus on when scaling a community as regards culture is setting the bar high and keeping it there. So what do I mean by that? As leaders, you're the ones that have to model the positive engagement and live the values you want to see demonstrated in your community. This means being a living, breathing example of your values, but also taking swift and decisive action against poor conduct, both from others in your community, but also owning your own mistakes when you make them and learning from them. Over time, it might be possible to delegate this kind of work to a community team to deal with culture and code of conduct issues. But in the early stages of scaling, this will definitely sit on the shoulders of the leaders of the project. So you need to be aware of that. So hopefully that gives you a couple of thoughts on how to make sure that as you scale your community, your core values aren't lost and you don't struggle to maintain the culture that you want to see. So what about the folks who are actually developing the community and helping you grow? Well, one of the main reasons that we found in several communities I'm involved in for people not stepping up has been they just don't actually know how they can get involved or that there's a need to get involved because stuff just is happening. Firstly, I've found that having all the tasks that need to be done in one or maybe two systems really helps to give visibility and to direct people to where they can find how they can help. In my local Buddhist center, we use Trello boards. In Maltic, we've got a Jira instance and projects and teams all have their own boards. And we use GitHub issues for bugs. In the community handbook, we direct people to these places with filtered lists specifically for people who are new. So for a designer, you could go straight to a list of good first issues that are good for a designer. Or for a tester, pull requests that have already been tested once and need one more test to get merged. The handbook is also where we document information for every type of contribution. Even if we haven't had contributors with those skills yet, we still have it documented how they can get started. So if someone comes along with those skills, they can see really clearly, ah, this is how I get going. I think it's important to consider if you're growing community at this stage, how you're going to recognize contributors. When it's just you and a team of people who are doing it for the love of the project, you probably don't feel like you need to be recognized, but research does show that recognition helps to improve retention. So it's worth considering. Whatever you decide to do in this area has to be appropriate to your community and delivered in a fair and consistent way. Great, so let's move on and think about how we can make sure as we scale the community, we don't burn out and neither do our contributors. As I mentioned earlier, it can be a lonely process and can also set up a lot of self-doubt when you're trying to grow and scale a community. I can't emphasize enough the importance of having a peer support network around you of people who are doing similar things. Not only does it help you tap in and contribute towards a great body of knowledge and experiences so that you're not reinventing the wheel every time with a new challenge that comes up, but it also gives you a place where you can share your difficulties and challenges where it can be heard and held by people who are going through the same things. Some communities that I find really great in this regard are the DevRel Collective, if you're working with developer communities, or CMX, which is much more community focused. There are a lot of communities out there though, so find one that works for you. You need to be supported and you need to have your needs met before you can effectively support others. And it's really important that you remember that. On this note, it's also important that you as leaders of the community set clear boundaries around the time you're available in the community, your personal space and so forth. Modeling this kind of healthy boundary setting as a leader also encourages your community members to follow that lead. I feel like also as leaders of a growing project, it's important to check in periodically with each other, with your core team, but also key contributors, just to chat about how they're doing, how they feel about the community, if there's anything that they're finding difficult, especially if you've got leadership roles, people who've been promoted in the community, supporting the leaders really helps set them up for success, which helps set your community up for success. So we've covered how to proactively manage the culture of the community as you scale, how to empower people to get involved, and also how to make sure that that growth is sustainable and not leading to burnout of you or your community. 
these are just a few things to consider. We haven't got time to go into everything today. So let's move on now to how we can actually monitor the growth of our community, the growth in contributors, and proactively pick up on potential problems using automated tools. So first and foremost, it's important to decide what's actually important when you're monitoring the growth of a community. Some metrics might tell you how many people are joining your community, but is that what you're actually interested in if they don't make any kind of engagement or community? These are what we call vanity metrics. I'd recommend you track things that are actually making a difference in your community. In our case, we do keep an eye on people joining and having conversations, but the ones that I'm really interested in are who's making contributions and the consistency and retention of those contributors. I think it's also important to think what you will do with those metrics. In our case, we share this with the community every month, some key metrics, things like which organisations and individuals are contributing. And I also do a quarterly roundup on the blog, which goes into more detail. At my Buddhist centre, we share things like traffic to our website, proportion of those who go on to book a place or attend newcomers, and how they heard about that. Those are the things that matter to that community and matter to the growth of that community. Those are the things you want to measure. It's also important in tech communities that we make sure we're not just focusing on code contributions, but we're also tracking non-code. These ones aren't so easy to track, but it's important you do make an effort to make sure those people are recognised. But whatever you decide to do, I'm all for making sure it doesn't add to any overhead to your daily work. There are some tools that you can look at using that automate a lot of this for you. Depends on your needs as to which ones are actually going to be appropriate for you. But these are some tools you might want to consider. So Cauldron is web-based. Grimoire Lab allows you to install a dashboard locally and also allows you to track your own metrics that you're actually interested in. There's other tools such as Orbit, which allows you to get into more detail about community health and sentiment analysis and how people are moving through different stages of engagement in your community. And the one that we use in Mautic is called Savannah CRM. This one has much more of a focus on the contributor side of things. So who is contributing, what organisations are contributing. And also you can drill down into specific areas of your project. You can look into sentiment analysis and you can look at who's talking about what in your community. So these tools will let you track a whole range of things. You have to obviously decide what's relevant. It can let you pick up on things like if the speed of which you're dealing with pull requests is going down, so people are having to wait longer, it can give you warnings about that. It can also alert you to say nobody's actually responded in this particular channel in the last three weeks, but there's been multiple conversations with the community. So nudging you towards engaging where you're not actually responding to people in the community. So they're all worth having a look at, having a trial and seeing what actually meets your needs for your community. So I hope this has given you some ideas for dealing with the challenges of growing and scaling communities and also a bit of a short overview of the tools that you could look at using or at least investigate to monitor that growth and pick up on developing issues. I'm available in the Discord channel to answer any questions that you might have, but you can also follow up with me on email at ruth.gzy at or you can ping me on Twitter or LinkedIn, whatever works best for you. Um, otherwise, yeah, looking forward to chatting and please do reach out if you have any questions. Thanks for having me at GitCon and I hope you have an awesome event. Speak to you soon. Bye.